SALT! Ignoring a full decade of hard medical evidence and running on an indefensible agenda that has proven to be outdated and incorrect, the bureaucrats and the Big Apple propose that all chain restaurants add a salt shaker warning symbol on menus next to food products that contain more than the recommended daily limit of 2300 milligrams of sodium. However, all the data available from the last decade of medical research, as well as from the World Health Organization's Global Health Observatory, makes it patently clear that this recommendation is dead wrong and may decrease life expectancy for Americans. It is the first example of a regulation that has the known potential to increase morbidity and mortality, according to the available WHO data. All the anti-salt fanatics better go back and read the medical evidence, because this discriminatory regulation will never accomplish better health. They can wheedle their bureaucratic and political advantages. They can continue to finagle the public media, but they cannot manipulate basic physiology. If they intend to limit our intake of salt, where everyone has, in fact, their own personal needs, they will be placing a population of 8 million people at a greater risk of decreased life. And I publicly challenge any one of these deceived regulators to a debate based on the available published medical evidence. The regulation also discriminates against certain religious and ethnic groups. Kosher meat, even after rinsing, is higher in salt than other meat. Therefore, restaurants that serve kosher meat will be at a specific disadvantage with this regulation. Many ethnic food dishes from all over the world are far higher in salt than the typical American cuisine. Restaurants serving these foods will be at a disadvantage as well. And restaurants that serve traditional Mediterranean foods, the gourmet foods such as their cheeses, prosciutto, bacala, olives, etc., etc., because every gourmet food there is was made when there was no refrigeration and salt was and still is the key to preserving these foods. So New Yorkers may have to say goodbye to gorgonzola or roquefort or parmesan, pecorino, feta, provolone and so forth. But then again, New Yorkers can always order plastic cheesy slices. What about our health? Last year, an enormous study by more than 150 researchers from around the world to determine salt consumption in populations around the world was sponsored by WHO and published by Powell's Fahimi Misha et al. in the British medical journal BMJ Open. When their data is compared to the WHO figures on life expectancy and WHO healthy life expectancy, called HALE, the relationship is obvious. The highest life expectancies are in those countries that consume between 2,800 and 5,500 milligrams sodium per day, and the lowest life expectancies are in those countries that consume less than 2,800 and over 5,500 milligrams sodium a day. The dietary guideline recommendations are simply wrong. Americans currently consume about 3,500 milligrams sodium per day and they're right at the top of the life expectancy curve. The bureaucrats that created this regulation prefer to send us down to the lowest levels of the life expectancy curve. This is World Health Organization data. No wonder people worry about mindless regulations. Don't these people do their homework? Or is it only power and politics that counts and hang the consumer? Or in this case, possibly shorten their lives? It's not about general statistical terms such as population. It's about individual consumers like you and me. It's also about what the actual medical evidence says. Americans already eat within the safe range of sodium consumption and population-wide sodium reduction strategies are unnecessary and could be harmful. My fellow citizens of the Big Apple, it's time to stand up for good taste and long life. Salt!